Welcome to MedEasy. The heart is the first functional organ to form in the vertebrate embryo. It begins beating and pumping blood as early as the fourth week of gestation. So let's talk about the process of heart morphogenesis. After the two endocardial tubes have fused together and formed the primary heart tube, which is still bilaterally symmetrical, it must develop a left-right polarity, which will occur by a process known as cardiac looping, which also begins at the fourth week of development. Establishing this left-right polarity requires dynein, which is a motor protein that is a component of cilia. Any defect in this dynein arm can lead to dextrocardia, which is a rare condition in which the apex of the heart is positioned on the right rather than the normal left position. Dextrocardia is a feature of Cartagener's syndrome, which is the most common ciliary disease. A tip for you is that Cartagener's syndrome presents with a triad of symptoms, chronic sinusitis, bronchiectasis, and situs inversus. After cardiac looping, the heart begins to form septa to establish the four-chambered structure that we all know. Let's talk about atrial septation first. In atrial septation, septum primum grows downward from the roof of the primitive atrium towards the endocardial cushion. The space left between these two structures is called ostium primum. Ostium is Latin for door, and it means an opening. In the center of septum primum, a second ostium called ostium secundum begins to form as a result of cell death. And on the right of septum primum, a second septum begins to form called the septum secundum, which will expand and cover most of the ostium secundum. The residual opening between those two septums are called foramen ovale. Foramen is Latin for hole, and foramen ovale serves to shunt blood from the right heart to the left heart during embryonic life. And soon after birth, the foramen ovale is sealed shut due to decrease of right atrial pressure after fetal circulation has been cut off and an increase in left atrial pressure as a result of opening of the pulmonary circulation and the subsequent increase in pulmonary venous return. It's also worthy to note here that there is another structure in middle cranial fossa, also named foramen ovale, which transmits the mandibular nerve. So that's the atrial septal formation. A defect in this process can lead to a congenital malformation. It will be useful for our future discussions regarding congenital cardiac malformations to talk briefly about the clinical presentation of these malformations. So any cardiac congenital malformation can present as either one of three things. First, left to right shunt. Second, right to left shunt. And third, obstruction. A shunt is any abnormal communication between chambers or blood vessels. In some diseases, more than one presentation can occur, like in tetralogy of fallow, an obstruction, pulmonary stenosis, is also associated with a shunt, right to left shunt through a ventricular septal defect. A patent foramen ovale occurs when the septum primum and septum secundum fail to fuse together after birth. This is not technically considered an atrial septal defect because there isn't a fixed opening between the atria that allow unrestricted blood flow, rather the septa are just unsealed, although of sufficient size to cover the foramen ovale. This condition, in fact, is so common it occurs in about 25% of people, but most remain asymptomatic and don't know they have the condition. But because the two septa remain unsealed, any rise in right atrial pressure, as in Valsalva maneuver during sneezing or straining during bowel movement, can lead to transient right-to-left shunt, and it can also cause paradoxical embolism, which means that venous emboli can enter the systemic arterial circulation via this open defect. Now, as for the ventricular septum, it's composed of two portions, a muscular portion and a membranous portion. The muscular portion develops from the floor of the primitive ventricle and grows upward towards the AV cushion. The foramen remaining is called the interventricular foramen. The membranous portion is formed by a structure known as aorticopulmonary septum, which in addition to forming the membranous portion of the septum, also separates the aorta and pulmonary artery as the name suggests. Ventricular septal defects are the most common congenital cardiac anomalies. They occur in around 1 per 200 live births, and this defect is associated with a left to right shunt. The outflow tracts of the heart are basically the conduits or the passages that connect the muscular chambers of the heart with the great arteries, the aorta and the pulmonary artery. These tracts are formed by cells called the neural crest cells, which are multipotent stem cells that develop on the side of the neural tube in early embryo and can migrate to the heart. In the heart, those cells can give rise to many structures including the truncus arteriosus and bulbus cordis. A ridge-like thickening portion of these structures called truncal and bulbar ridges will form the aorticopulmonary septum. 
which as we discussed earlier will also be the membranous portion of the interventricular septum and will divide the truncus arteriosus into aorta and pulmonary artery. Failure of neural crest cells to migrate is associated with conotruncal anomalies like transposition of great arteries, tetralogy of fallow, and persistent truncus arteriosus. These are called conotruncal anomalies because they're related to both conus arteriosus or the outflow tracts and truncus arteriosus or the great arteries. Finally, the valves, whether semilunar or atrioventricular, will develop from the endocardial cushion. The semilunar valves, the pulmonary and aortic, will develop from endocardial cushions of the outflow tract, while the atrioventricular valves, the mitral and tricuspid, will develop from the endocardial cushions of the AV canal. This concludes the topic of heart morphogenesis. Thank you for watching MedEasy, and don't forget to visit the link in the description for written notes and practice questions on this topic.